I don't know if we can watch this because I feel like this is going to have blood in it. No. It was all there in front of your face, you know. Welcome to reality. The man you're looking at is 24 year old YouTuber Randy Stair. He's obsessed with two. Th I sent this and there's no blood that I remember. You fell off. What did he say? I, mi I missed it. Someone was talking shit and I missed it. You fell off. The hood listens to Cardi now. <laughs> That Cardi comment triggered. Things not often found together. The cartoon Danny Phantom and Columbine. Although this should have raised red flags what? when Randy's descent into madness went overlooked by those around him. Nothing would stand in his way from becoming a mass killer. What's up, Ewu crew? It's the Raven here to share another shocking, interesting, or just strange, but very true story with you. Today's subject is Randy Stair, more popularly remembered as Andrew Blaze. Despite being known by his YouTube pseudonym, I'm going to use his legal name Randy when talking about him, as this is the name that would eventually become infamous. What makes this case uniquely disturbing is the fact that Randy actually videotaped everything up until the day of his massacre and left behind a trail of disturbing clues in preparation for his final plan. And although all the signs were there that something was about to go very wrong, Randy's fans either ignored it or didn't take it seriously. But Randy was dead serious, and I'm not exaggerating when I say the motive behind his massacre is the most bizarre I've ever heard. Randy first became interested in YouTube in 2008, eventually creating a channel called Pioneer Productions. At first, his content seemed pretty normal. He created. Listen, all I'm going to say is maybe if iDubs didn't constantly say, the N word, this is what his outcome could have been like. But you don't think about that. Okay? Think about it. He channeled all of his energy into that. Now, that's what is known as a joke. For those of you who don't understand, um, I'm using uh, humor here to uh, lighten the mood on a on a very uh, serious subject, uh, obviously, uh, what Idubs was doing was unacceptable. But the butt of the joke there is that he uh, also looks like a school shooter and had those tendencies, but didn't luckily come out that way. Um, so that's, I think that was pretty good. So I just wanted to, you know, point that out and explain the joke every single time in an effort not to uh, frustrate you, because uh, as you know. As everybody knows, leftists are never allowed to have fun. Created Let's Plays, filming himself and his reactions as he played video games. And sometimes he'd act out skits with a toy frog and stuffed whale. He rubbed shoulders with some popular creators in YouTube's early days. He was mentioned at one point in a Ray William Johnson video, bragged that Fred supposedly liked one of his videos, and was even friends with Plasma Master Don, a YouTuber who recently died and was then allegedly exposed as a sex offender. But as Randy's videos went on, there was a noticeable change. You see, Randy was obsessed with the Nickelodeon cartoon Danny Phantom which follows the adventures of main character Danny Fenton, who became a human-ghost hybrid after an accident involving the portal between the human world and the ghost zone. This is where Randy first saw the character Ember McLean. She was his first crush, and the moment he laid eyes upon her in his late elementary years, he said he instantly felt something change within him. Like, if you look on the poster behind me, those were inspired by Ember McLean, which is a ghost from a TV show called Danny Phantom, which started back in 2000. And what the fuck's in the background that it's, like, censored? Scenes from the show, sex toys, rule 34. You can't just blast rule 34, dude. Are you kidding me? No shot. I don't think that he's fucking blasting rule 34 in the background, dude. 
it's probably to not get copy striked uh, by Nickelodeon or something. Nickelodeon copyright, right? Yeah, I can see that being the reason. Three, two thousand four. You know, I was in late elementary school at that time. But this ghost, this woman, always connected with me. But ever since I first saw her, something changed. And it wasn't like I grew up or anything like that. Like I realized, oh my gosh, I'm attracted to girls and all this. No, it just something changed. It was like a spark, and it just connected with me. It made me feel warm inside, and it felt very familiar, which was strange. It was like I'd seen her before. He said his official ember phase started in 2010, but later said this obviously wasn't a phase, but a realization. As Randy fell down the rabbit hole of this infatuation, he created his own spin-off characters, also known as OCs, original characters, along with his own animated series based on the show. This series was called Ember's Ghost Squad, obviously inspired by Ember McLean. Randy was so invested in his animated series that he had stickers of his fictional characters on his car. What started out as a seemingly innocent partaking of a fandom was about to turn into something far more disturbing. But in hindsight, perhaps the signs of Randy's dark side were evident in his early years. As a child, Randy was described as shy, he desperately wanted friends and began struggling with thoughts of death in elementary school, fantasizing that he'd board a plane and it would crash so it would be an insta-death. Death was even a reoccurring theme in the games Randy would play as a child making the childhood videos he'd upload all the more eerie to look back on. So why don't you It's not that easy. I can't suffer, not just me, but all the people who, who made me suffer. Why do I die so much? It's good to be living. No, it's not. His loneliness would follow him into high school. Though he described having a few friends, he never had a girlfriend or went on a date. It was during this time that Randy seemed to start crying out for help through attention-seeking behavior, such as writing stories in class where the characters would die horrible and gruesome deaths. He couldn't believe his teachers didn't care. I must have wrote like four or five stories where the character got killed at the end, and I actually turned these in as assignments, and I never got like any like weird looks from the teacher or anything. She was a nice teacher and everything, really great. Yeah, the teacher never like felt concerned or anything. I, I just remember not getting any feedback in terms of that so i don't know what she was thinking but soon enough randy started investing more time into pioneer productions and it wasn't long before youtube became his passion in life he eventually decided to dedicate all his time to his channel it was during this time that randy seemed to get more and more isolated he was almost always alone in his videos something inside randy would begin to break in his late high school years as he prepared to enter the real world he began getting poor grades as he neared graduation, and he hated his job working at the Y supermarket. And high school, I was that typical jaded teenager, you know, just don't want to be here, don't want to do anything. I'm bored with my life. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. You know, the typical teenage drama you deal with. And Having no clue what he wanted to do with his life, he started to go down a dark path fantasizing about setting himself on fire like the cartoon character Ember and taking his own life. And something would happen to Randy that would change him forever. One of his brother's friends, Tom, died in a car crash. Tom Lynch. He was in my brother's grade. He was just, he was a grade below me, but I've had a class with him before and whatnot, so I knew him. And he died on his way to in school in the morning, crashed into a tree, smashed into a tree, dead on arrival at the hospital. And that was the first time I got messed up. That messed me up. Though he hadn't known Tom well, he said his death really affected him. His daydreams in class became consumed with either YouTube or death, and his growing fixation on the morbid subject would lead him to start a strange tradition, driving by the location of Tom's death every year on the same day he died. When I'm not thinking about YouTube or my family or what I love, I'm always thinking about what happens after you die. I want to do everything I possibly can in life before I'm dead. And that's just a scary thought. It's like everything has to end sometime. I'll be dead one day. You'll be dead one day. It's, it's not good to think about stuff like that. I know this is scary stuff, but it is just weird. And I think about it too much. Randy claimed to be struck by tragedy again after one of his newest friends, Matt, also suddenly died in a car accident. He wrote in his journal, Tom's death sucked the life out of me. Matt's death killed me. Doesn't matter what you do, you're gonna die. 
You'll end up dead one day. It's like right now. Someone right now is going to sleep. They're going to wake up tomorrow and be dead. Someone's going to die tomorrow that just went to sleep. And they don't know that. They're going to go to sleep now, wake up tomorrow, go into the world, and they're going to die somehow. Car accident, heart attack, some other supernatural force or whatever. Yeah, just... I think about that a lot, too, which is weird. I think about death a lot. I and mean, I, I take no shame in thinking about dying a lot, but I seriously do think about death all the time, and it's not a good thing. Death is not fun to think about. In a way, it's like an escape. For me, it is. Not long after, Randy himself ended up getting into a car accident, and it was like this event flipped a switch in him, causing his obsessions to spiral into an even darker, deeper place. Randy began to fixate on the idea of getting older, and this idea terrified him. This fear would eventually warp into a disgust for older people, and Randy decided that living past the age of 30 was pointless. It was here that he decided he wanted to die young and soon. There would be no possible way I could live until I was 60-something. Not a chance in hell. Honestly, I don't know how people do it. I don't know how people get up every day and go to like a dead-end job, come home, do the same exact routine every day, every weekend. How do you honestly do that? I was never able to compute it in my head. How do you live on this planet for decades upon decades upon decades? I honestly don't know how you do it. At the same time, Randy was developing some other strange ideas involving the cartoon character Ember, writing in his journal. I miss my cartoon-like form. Bodies in this dimension are tolerable, but they're nothing compared to that dimension. And that's when Ember came back into my life. It was in 2013. That was just... That was it. From that point forward, she never left my life again, ever. He became convinced that after he died, he would return to his true form, a ghost girl just like Ember, and that he'd live on with the fictional characters he'd created in Ember's Ghost Squad, or EGS. This was what Randy called his big realization, that he didn't belong here on Earth. He was actually a ghost girl, and the only way he could return to what he was truly supposed to be was by dying. During this time, he also began struggling with his gender identity, leading him to experiment with wearing bras. I guess what it came down to was I felt like I was like transgender or something. Like I felt like a, a woman the whole time, which spiritually, I'm a woman. I'm a female soul, but I had to live in a man's body. Holy shit. This person was just like, this person was trans. And, like, probably had a fuckload of internalized, like, transphobia and, and so many other, uh, so many other issues on top of that, right? That's crazy. When was this video made? This video is new. Holy fuck. I mean, listen, you can... Be trans, not realize it, and then also simultaneously have murderous uh, fucking urges and be crazy separately. It has nothing to do with, like, being trans in general, but having internalized transphobia could be a factor in you going down, like, a, like a wild, uh, He did what he did in 2017. She did what she did. Or actually, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if they would want to be uh, gendered as male or female. I, I don't know. It's kind of weird that they don't, like, fucking mention it. It's kind of weird that they don't mention it uh, in the beginning of the video. It, it is wild. He said he was a ghost girl, not a woman. He literally identifies a cartoon girl from Danny Phantom. Who cares the murder? I mean, it, it doesn't matter. You're not supposed to fucking... Just because someone's a piece of shit that doesn't mean you misgender them and or, or, or fucking psycho. It's entirely separate. But when you see, like, a black person do a murder, do you call them the N-word? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, it doesn't give you an excuse to just be, like, a bigoted person, dude. Like, you can't do that. He said he had a female soul. I don't know. I, I don't know... It's a unique case. They, they might not have been. Seems like they stopped identifying as female. Keep watching. I don't know what pronouns either are. Says my favorite trans chatter, Young Zoe. Right. To do what I set out to do. That was my soul contract. That was what I was meant to do. He eventually stole clothes out of his mother's closet and cross-dressed when no one else was home. I was cross-dressing ever since high school. When you guys would go to your bowling leagues and Jeremy would go with you, I would either film a YouTube video 
you know, back in early high school, you know, ninth, 10th, 11th grade, I would pretty much always film a YouTube video between ninth and 10th grade on every Wednesday when you would go out the door. So I would either film a video or I would cross dress. And that's something I've kept to myself my whole life. I never told anybody about this. He wrote in his journal, I sit here alone on my bed full of emptiness. I'm wearing my girl clothes with my legs crossed. Why am I damned to spend two to three decades in this disgusting body? I'm not a man. Sorry, mom and dad, but I'm not sorry. I'm a woman. Each and every day it gets harder and harder to live in this body. I'm wearing my female natural selection shirt with my American Eagle bra, panties, and black leggings. I guess the proper term would be transgender, but I don't even fully agree on that. I'm legit a girl trapped inside a boy's body. I'm a femme soul. Randy began taking action to change his appearance in order to better match his ghost girls. He skipped meals when he could, surprised that his family didn't notice, and started shaving all of his body hair with a woman's razor. At first, he hid his razor in a drawer in his room, but then for some reason decided to keep it out in the open. Again, he couldn't believe that no one noticed. Perhaps it started to seem to him like nothing he did really made a difference. Maybe he started thinking he'd need to do something more drastic to get people's attention. Every year of my life since 2013, I just felt more and more feminine. Can't even explain it. Look at look at the bathroom look at where my stuff was you'll see there's a girl's venus razor there there's the skin to mitt stuff that girls use to shave their legs and arms with every three days since like 2016 i've been shaving my arms and legs and entire body every three days it's just one thing i'll say is like that white stain on the floor like that splotch you'll see on my carpet that was an ember thing i just i wanted to make my skin as white as possible to look like her i wanted it to be completely white so i bought this this body paint which was like, I don't even know what it was. It was like latex that like, it becomes like glued to your skin and you gotta peel it off. And it got on the carpet and then it got freaking in my body hair, which like almost never came out at the time. What little body hair I had at the time anyways, but um, that stuff never came off. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, you're over there sleeping and here I am at three in the morning covering myself in this latex. Randy's inner turmoil was far from over, and although his passion for Ember would continue to intensify, it wasn't long before he was forming a new obsession, the Columbine High School Massacre. He began frequently posting on a Columbine forum and participating in different threads, even a thread for sharing Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold memes. One post that caught his attention read, I know the students finished the 1999 school year at a nearby school, but I was wondering if they still had to complete their final exams. What about exams for the injured? It'd be so mean to make Patrick take them after he got out of the hospital. Randy replied, I never thought about that, ha ha ha. Tests had to be the last thing on the surviving victims' minds. To me, Randy just seemed like one of those people who, when he's interested in something, he dives in headfirst with an almost uncanny hyperfixation. But unfortunately, none of his obsessions were healthy. Yeah, I mean, listen, listen, I think that this person probably has a lot, I mean, not probably, clearly has a lot of, of issues. But it almost feels like, it almost feels like mental health and a support system could have literally prevented whatever murder that they engage in. I have no idea. In a lot of instances, that is usually the case. Like, but sometimes we watch uh, murderers and we're like, dude, what the fuck? Like, like yesterday, the guy from yesterday who was just like, deeply addicted to uh, uh, uh e-girls right like that dude had a support system right that dude had people that were like there to help him try to reach out try to help him try to change his behavior try to see him uh and and and, and he still was like nah fuck that i'm literally gonna murder all of you this person on the other hand i feel like does not have that same kind of uh support system it doesn't feel like they do uh and also on top of that like Like, it's obvious that they were, like, looking for attention and recognition from their family that they might be trans. They bring it up multiple times, you know what I mean? Like, it's clear. That doesn't justify the murder, don't get me wrong. It's just that, like, it's so sad when it, some of these instances, like, where you, you can see how the other person could have been, a, other person is, like, a victim of their own circumstances as well. And now Randy was starting to get ideas. 
He was also starting to feel increasingly lost in life. During a live stream from 2014, three years before his plan, Randy suddenly announced to the dismay of his fans that he wouldn't be around much longer and would probably be leaving YouTube for reasons he couldn't state. I'm not leaving right this second. I, I, it could be a year, it could be a little bit longer than that. I don't have anything set in stone or anything like that. There's multiple reasons for it. I don't know, I don't really know what to say. It's just like, I'm leaving in like a year. He ranted about how his YouTube channel was all he ever wanted to do and how graduating from college for mass communications was a waste of three years because it was a field he said he would never enter. He had his passion for YouTube, but after working at it for six years, he was sure he had failed. Having to accept this and figure out a different way to earn money seemed quite difficult for him. You know, it's like, it's not really, YouTube's not a job or anything like that, but it really is like I have two different jobs in my life and having to balance each one. The one I care about most is YouTube, but it's not a job. And that's literally all my time goes into the YouTube channel. I just can't deal with everything anymore. He also talked about how much he hated his job at the supermarket, but he had to keep it for the money. Supermarket for four years. I'm about to set the place on fire. Right now, that's my only source of income, and I'm not making a lot. I wish I could just do this forever. I wish I could just interact with viewers, do videos, but life doesn't allow that. He also alluded to something extremely telling. There's just, there's so much more than just, like, real life problems. There's other just stuff, too, that just what's in my head of what I want to do and uh, just things I don't want to say publicly because it would hurt a lot, a lot of people. But somehow, even after this pessimistic live stream, Randy said that 2014 ended up being one of his best years. And so he held off on planning the grand escape from his human body. However, it wasn't long until he began to feel dissatisfied with life once again. And in 2017, he decided it was time. But before he could do anything, he wanted to finish off the EGS animation project he'd been working on. That, and he needed a weapon. He thought he'd be able to go forward with his big plan in September, figuring he'd finish his project by then. He tried to figure out a way he could decide the date based on coding the letters EGS, E being 5, G being 7, and S being 19, placing his big plan for 5719. But as the days went by, he realized he couldn't wait two years. He wanted to die so he could become the ghost girl that was clawing to get out. 14, 13, 12 days away from doing this, you know? This is it. There's a lot on my mind. If you're in my position, you'd have a lot on your mind too. Every day, I have to make count. You know, this is it. I'm just under two weeks to live. You got two weeks to live. What do you do? God is forbid if somebody does see me blocking the exits, they... I don't know what they'd say. <laughs> I don't know what I'd say. I'm tired of the same old routine. I'm tired of everything but my girls. That's really it. In the meantime, Randy began filming a set of tapes for his parents to view after his death, planning to post them online just before he struck. He ranted in his journal about how much he hated humanity and how he was a self-described narcissist who enjoyed watching the tapes of himself over and over again. Pages upon pages of the journal were dedicated to rambling about the Columbine Massacre as he described again and again how he was sucked into the world of Columbine and how he felt a special connection especially to Eric Harris. He also revealed he was extremely homophobic and racist, writing extensively about his hatred for gay people. His goal to finish the animation project before he died wasn't working out. He complained in his journal that the voiceover actresses he hired weren't going fast enough, and he freaked out when an animator didn't want to work on his project because he wasn't comfortable with the theme. See, Randy's animation project was called The Westboro High Massacre. So all things considered, it's weird enough that he found anyone comfortable to even voice act for it. Still don't have it. I sent the script in March. It's June 2nd. Where's my voiceovers, Laura, that I paid for? Where are they? Better have that voiceover by Monday, Laura. You're dead. Makes you feel like you don't even matter. Remember that when you work with people in the future. Because I expected to have this months ago. At least say what's going on so I know. It makes you feel like you don't matter. What the ever. The people are worthless sacks of Nobody cares until you're dead. It's the sad truth of life. Watch all my social medias. I can't believe he's dead. I'm so sad. I loved his videos. I was you haven't seen Jack on my social media since. And after this happens, people will be like, man, I wish I would have talked with him more. Well, too late. It's always what happened with my fan base. As much as I love my fans, no one said Jack to me until I said something big. Like, oh, I'm leaving. If nothing major was happening, it was like I didn't even exist. What the 
ever. I swear to God, people can say they care about me all they want. You didn't show it. But I was subscribed to you for years. Who cares? You never said anything. People say they care. I don't care. It's too late now. But eventually, everything fell apart with the people he was working with. His project was stuck, and he decided he'd had enough. That he couldn't wait any longer. He purchased two shotguns, writing in his journal. You were a fool to trust me with that shotgun. Oh, mother, if only you realize you just signed my death warrant by taking me to that gun shop. That just happened. That just f***ing happened. Oh, my goddess. Oh, my goddess. I am f***ing armed. I am f***ing armed. I got it. I f***ing got it. Two Mossberg 500 shotguns. My boss has been trying to get on day shift or second shift. He had an opportunity to get it but the way things are looking, he's not gonna get it. So then also put me like on the clock here because it's like he's been trying to look for other places to work. The way I see it, I can just barely have enough time to do all this within four weeks. I want it to be the night of June 9th. I can't tell my parents that I have two shotguns now. They know I have the one, but then if they see that I have the exact same gun, but two inches shorter on the barrel, it'd be like, why do you need that? And that's when it starts to get into like personal stuff. Like, why do you need two shotguns? You're scaring me. Please don't start buying more guns. You know, I have all the pieces. I'm just waiting on getting some eyeliner. So far, it's been okay. I've gotten the occasion of like, why are you obsessed with this Columbine? But other than that, virtually nothing. I don't think people would actually like, think I would actually consider doing something like this. He took target practice videos and what appeared to be in his backyard with someone else holding the camera and filming him. It makes you wonder who exactly was filming him and how they couldn't have realized something was about to go very wrong. Especially to That's the South, dude. That's America, baby. That's what it is. Why would they? Why would they uh, think that like someone who's uh, glorifying school shooters would be shooting a sawed-off shotgun and that would be a cause for concern? That's just the most... That's the most... Uh, that's the least violent American out there. Taking Randy's shirt into consideration. What, natural selection? Never mind. That's not even... Oh, God. I thought it was like... I thought the shirt was even worse. I thought the shirt said, like, I'm going to do a school shooting or something. It just says natural selection. Like, literally every hog is just like, PA equals South? Hello? Hello? Do you know the state of Pennsylvania, motherfucker? You're going to act like the Pennsylvania is not, like, entirely almost entirely a southern state in attitude okay he's literally in rural pennsylvania it is one of the more pennsylvania is more south than miami that's the same shirt one of the columbine shooters wore okay there you go The same shirt Eric Harris wore on the day of the Columbine massacre. Should I hit the button? That's what happened mom. next is almost unbelievable. Randy began deliberately leaving a disturbing trail of notes and tweets that he was planning something, and the date for his plan was June 7th. He was not being very subtle at all, but still nobody seemed to even care. In his journal, Randy seemed almost disappointed that his parents didn't notice he was planning something. He wore his natural selection shirt time and time again and was shocked that his parents didn't catch the reference. But Eric Harris had a white t-shirt, black text, natural selection. I bought three of them, yet none of you knew what it meant, which blew my mind. I didn't want to tell you that, so I kept that under wraps. That's a warning sign. He wrote, how she hasn't questioned me or seen the signs is beyond me. Looking back now, you might realize, geez, I, I don't know how I missed it. You might just start having flashbacks in your head of certain things, like certain situations where it's like, wow, that was one of them, or that was a warning sign right there. He wondered in his journal if he would have fangirls who would obsess over him. That'd be great, he wrote. He began tweeting a series of alarming messages, not only on his main Twitter account, but on the variety of alternate Twitter accounts he had created to roleplay, or pretend to be, his characters. You know, I wrote all this dark, brutal, morbid, grim stuff into my videos, and people ate it up, and they loved it. They didn't realize that I actually meant it all. I started posting on all my social media how I really felt. Amber was always there in this dark place, like I mentioned. She fueled me to do this. I was like, she told me to do this. Do it for the Ghost Squad. You know, we need more souls. He even convinced himself that one of his own fictional characters he had created, Mackenzie, was his soulmate. He drew himself as a ghost girl with Mackenzie holding hands. Captioned, love this girl. 
posing as these characters on multiple Twitter accounts, he took on their personalities and pretended he was all of them tweeting at each other, but really just at himself. Before Randy's big plan, the Ember Ghost Squad Twitter account tweeted, If you think your body is ready for June 7th, then you're gravely mistaken. 17 days is your calendar marked. Hashtag big things. Hashtag June 7th. As the days counted down to his plan, he posted under his McKenzie account, I can't take my eyes off the countdown clock. Andrew isn't crazy, just caught in the middle of two worlds and dimensions. People don't see or understand that. Looking back on these Twitter accounts, just feel- Yes, they're homophobic. <clears throat> they're also- There is a likelihood that they're trans. It happens. There's a lot of internalized transphobia. And also on top of that- uh, homophobia separately from that. Okay, there's just there's a lot going on. Vibe check is, is, uh, there's no vibe check here. This is like all broken. I mean, I mean, vibe check number one, they're a YouTuber. That's it. That's an automatic L. That's an automatic vibe check failure. It would have been worse if they were streaming on Twitch. But like, you know. Makes sense. Feels weird. As you're looking in on Randy's... Yes, as a self-report. I'm making a joke. Alter egos. Randy made his character Mackenzie calm and shy, while he made his other character Rachel violent and angry. In speaking through his characters, he would tweet back and forth about his plans in the wide open for everyone to see. The only thing I can think is maybe people assume the edgy and haunting content of the posts was Randy's way of really getting into the or ghost. Or maybe nobody saw it because these are like random ass fucking accounts. Look at this. They're just talking to themselves on the internet, dude. Steamed characters. But to him, the fun and games, the pretending, had ended a long time ago. What might be most notable about his accounts is his character Rachel's clear obsession with Columbine. Clearly, his two worlds were now inextricably intertwined. At this point... I don't even know if they're trans or if they just have, uh, like, uh, schizophrenic, multiple personalities. You know what I mean? It could be both, but it, it unironically feels like they have multiple personalities and, uh, and, and are schizophrenic, definitely narcissistic. What did you say? Hassan, no, this is not did. What? What do you mean this is not did? not how that works no i'm saying because like this is not how did presents disassociative oh identity disorder oh i was like what the fuck i thought you were like mistyping that it's not disassociative identity disorder bro did is multiple personalities I mean, they're pretty young for a, a lot of this anyway. It seems like he almost wanted to be caught before he did anything. How often is this? He's tries to already cry for help. That's definitely a cry for help. There's cries for help all over. Most of what chat knows, the idea is false inferent from TikTok, so. I think they have gender dysphoria, but that was the least of their concerns. Yeah, oh, yeah. Disassociative Identity Disorder, a.k.a. MPD. You should stream on Twitter? What? hundred thousand real comments in the chat and you focus on the spelling mistake comments? You're an idiot? No, I thought that was a... I thought they were... Writing it in a was a mistake. This associative identity disorder, previously known as multiple personality disorder, is different from schizo. Um, the reason why I say that is because it's like they're they're playing characters, like multiple characters in their head about how they uh have different personalities 
with each character. One of them is more violent. The other one's whatever. You know what I mean? Feel me? Point Randy was completely lost in his fictional world and convinced that he would die and come back as one of his characters. It was his own fantasy that would spell his doom. And as his social media antics continued and time slowly ran out, it should have been obvious to anyone following his Twitter accounts that something was very wrong. Here's where things get chilling. Randy wanted to go out with a bang, and in a sickening twist, he decided it would all come down to a coin flip. Whether he would commit a massacre at home or at the supermarket where he worked the night shift. And this is what happened. Okay, so here's the deal. Oh my god. Got a 1983 quarter right here. You believe in fate? Here's the fate test. I'm gonna flip this three times, or the best out of three, rather. And if it's heads, I'll do it here. If it's tails, supermarket. Best of three. Here we go. It is no country for old men. They got the same hair too as uh, Anthony Chagrin. I'm not gonna touch it. You will see it as I see it. If I can find it, there it is. That's the tails. See that? Two. Looking at it. You land, you son of Anthony Chagrin, whatever, shut up. I've never said a name right. Almost entirely psychos brought on by gender dysphoria. I did research on them for school. Tons of internalized transphobia and homophobia because of parents. They wanted to be Amber because it's who they wanted to be. Heads. Had to be, huh? Have to have it come down to the very last coin flip. Okay, this is it. For all the marbles. Except we're playing for like... This is not how we should officially be kicking off White Boy Summer on motherfucking 4th of July weekend. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, chat will really say anything. And sometimes anything can be beautiful, okay? That was a that was a beautiful way to cut through uh the the tension. Thank you. <laughs> Much more than marbles here. I can't believe I'm having this come down. To a coin flip. They say marbles? The flip of a coin. Here it goes. With a lot of killers like this, there's something weirdly um, liberating for them about like having control over this. It's very narcissistic that they, it's like a God complex thing where they're like, I have other people's lives and fates in my hand. And you can tell that they're enjoying the fact that a coin flip is going to decide who gets to be murdered in this situation. You fell off plus L, Shapiro did it better, plus Jank made you, plus on pause or all on sub. One, two, three. It's gonna land behind the camera, just to the side. I can't see it. I see it in the grass, but I can't see it. Tails. I forgot that which one that meant. Is a tails, folks. Tails. They're not a very good storyteller. Like. They should be reinforcing wh which one that means. Which means there's going to be a loss of a human life besides my own. Possibly more than one. That's fate for you.
And just like that, it was decided, with something as silly and trivial as the flip of a coin, the fates of innocent people were sealed, and they had no idea about any of it. Ready to die. Ready to go. Six more nights, it'll all be over. You hear that? That's how quiet it's gonna be in my house for a week. I wanna know how everyone's gonna take this. How much they're gonna cry. How long are they gonna cry for? For all I know, this story could just be headlines one day around here and then be gone. And I become anything for all I know. He kinda talks to the camera, he goes, Who's rumor? We should really check out those rumors more often. Oh, oh. Don't worry. That would mean that Twitch rumors have to go outside. So. On June 1st, 2017, Randy posted that he was going to need the help of his fans the next Wednesday night. Randy said he needed someone to record a brief live stream of him. I decided to broadcast it live on Facebook. I know something's going to end the stream. It's going to get cut short, I get reported, flagged, whatever. In his next message on June 2nd, Randy talks about the Westboro High Massacre video he made, which he promised would come out on June 7th. What happened? What the f happened, man? This is surreal right now, but I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think this is gonna be my last video. I don't know what will happen to my channels after this. I don't know what people are gonna think of me after this. It doesn't bother me, but just looking at everyone at the supermarket, the manager's coming in, ah, da, 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 just messing around and talking about this, and four more nights, your whole lives are gonna be turned upside down because of me. I'm gonna f your life up. I can't wait. I want that supermarket to be closed for like a f month or go out of business. It's a crime scene. <laughs> it's gonna be a crime scene and then i mean i think the ultimate self-report always is manifesto you write a manifesto it's like automatically you're you should be put on a watch list okay and no i don't mean the communist manifesto it'll be over and then everything will just be thrown away whoever would have thought that a cartoon character would cause this to happen. A cartoon character. How can a cartoon character bring all this out in you? How is that even possible? The biggest question will always be why. I only partially told you why. I'm not gonna tell you everything. And there's stuff that you still don't know about me that I'll never tell you. I'll take it to the grave. Em, you want a chip? <laughs> I'm not a psychopath. I don't hunt people down and kill them. I need to eat something substantial. Why does chat with absolute certainty say that they are not schizophrenic at all when they're talking to a fake personality that isn't there. Like they're just, they're talking to M. <clears throat> no. Because that's not how schizophrenia works. Read the DSM. Disassociative identity disorder doesn't work like that. Isn't that? Or having like a, because you can't diagnose someone by watching a video, Hassan, LMAO. Okay, well, I'm speculating and I don't know anything about psychology, okay? Dying here. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Take away YouTube, I'm nothing. I mean, there's other dimensions out there besides Earth. There's going to be a big eternal war. I will be laughing my white ghost female ass off. When I get messages saying, you know, I help people get through dark times, or I change their life, you know, or my videos make them laugh their ass off or put a smile on their face, you know, that's, that's all I ever really wanted deep down. I just, it wasn't there in the beginning. Like in the beginning, I just wanted to be like, I wanted to get famous from it. That was pretty much it. But I was like Onision that had an actual decent fan base pretty much. Personally, I actually used to watch Onision back in two Oh my God. Mega self-report. 2009. <laughs> I used to use his music in my videos, and then I just sort of went, I'm like, all right, he's making really weird that I don't care about. So, because he would cross dress and, and I'm like, uh, no thanks. Even though I cross dress myself, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Pretty similar with some things we view. <laughs> I say really brutal shit on Twitter sometimes, but people support it sometimes. It, it blows my mind. It's like, cool. It's a man's world. Men, women are better. <laughs> I'm gonna miss you guys. I really am. My emotions just aren't. What they used to be. Yet the most random thing in the world. <laughs> most normal Onision fan. Stop. I mean, it's 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 wild that like someone who is a psychopathic murderer is like fuck, man. Onision, kind of cringe. Yeah, I know I'm about to do a murder in in four days, but uh, at Onision, very cringe.
what can make me cry, but things that are supposed to make you cry, they don't. Let It Go and Frozen made me cry. A lot. Not just once, numerous of times. Like almost every time I'd watch the Why movie. Why are I'd they watch... so mad about this? It's the movie like 20 times. Life's real short. Sometimes it feels like an eternity, but life's so damn short. And look at me, I, it's like I blinked and I was 24 and a half. And I'll die 24 and a half. I sit here and I ask myself, would I do it all over again if I could? I'm gonna be dead before next week ends. I'll be dead, legit dead. This is it. So okay, I'll miss you guys. I'll miss you a lot. Some of you, maybe I'll see you on the other side. And this is Andrew Blaze signing off for the last time. Enjoy the rest of your lives. Andrew, out. And then... Dude, don't tell me they filmed it, like, the entire thing. Are you fucking kidding me? Okay, 2950, let me just cloak... <clears throat> okay, they don't show anything. That's crazy. They're, like, literally showing... The fucking narrator, or the... They're showing, like, footage, but they're not showing anything. He didn't film it. There's a lot of other weird shit in here, though. He took a strange and eerie video of the Wise Market grocery store, the place he worked for seven years, and the same place that would later become a crime scene. In this video, it seems he's scoping around the store and checking all the exits. I'm looking for blood, chat, chill. And it's incredibly haunting to watch, knowing what would happen just one day later. On the night of June 7th, just hours before the horror that was about to unfold, Randy posted his final video to YouTube, his big animation project. It starts out and shows him loading two shotguns, which he calls the twins, named Mackenzie and Rachel after his favorite fictional characters, before he stuffs them into a duffel bag. I gave them names. The first one I bought, I called Rachel. And then I called the smaller one Mackenzie, after Mackenzie West. As much as you might find it hard to believe, in this poster, I'm the one wrapping my arms around her. That's me. Again, this is a reference to Columbine, as Eric Harris also named his firearm. But Randy didn't stop there. Eric had etched the name into the firearm, and Randy decided to do the exact same thing. Now I duct taped the pistol grip, thanks to Eric Harris. It's in this video that he proclaims, I've been stepped on my whole life, not anymore. I've had enough of this putrid planet and I'm going to leave my mark. Yeah, kind of dark. And it honestly makes me wonder what was a bigger motivator for him in the end. The rebirth as a ghost girl he so desperately wished for, or simply getting the attention he desired for so long. You're looking at the beginning of his video right now, hours before what happened. At this point, Randy isn't being discreet. In fact, he practically bragged that something was going to happen. It was in plain sight now, and there was still time to stop him, but still no one reported a thing. I started talking with a girl online, and I started talking to her about the shotgun I got. She was one of only two people I told about the shotgun. Clearly, something dark is about to happen, but I have to warn you that what happens next is extremely disturbing, especially because this is the kind of thing that seems like it could happen anywhere and to anyone. The next day, in the early morning hours of June 8th, 24-year-old Randy was working his night shift at the store. He and four other employees of the store were stocking the shelves while they got ready to close. It was well after midnight and the store was quiet as they were all pretty tired. But because they all wanted to get the work done and head home, none of the other employees noticed that Randy wasn't actually doing his job. Instead of helping close the store and stock shelves, he was creeping to each of the exits and barricading them with pallets, trapping everyone inside. This calm and calculated preparation is especially chilling to me because there were so many chances to second guess the plan and turn back before it was too late. Randy took none of them. He casually walks to the emergency exit and pushes a pallet in front of the door before he goes back to cleaning up the store. When he pauses again, none of his co-workers think anything of it, especially because Randy is on his phone. What no one knew was that Randy was sending out a few different videos and posts, which were all detailed plans of the disturbing thing he was going to do next. On one of his Twitter accounts, he uploaded videos called Journal, Digital Set, and most concerningly, one called Suicide Tapes. At 10 p.m., he tweeted as Mackenzie, I hope we were able to get you through the day. I always... Bro, I've never seen Danny Phantom. Like, I, I didn't even know this was a thing. It looks like Fairly Odd Parents. <clears throat>
I thought it was like an offshoot of like fairly odd parent or godparents. Is that what the fucking don't it will fuck you up, man? Wait, what really? Is made by the fairly odd parents? It's a risky watch. Why? If you look at the Ember music video, every comment is about this dude. Please say goodbyes, but it's more like, see you later. Thank you, Mackenzie. Just before 1 a.m., right before the massacre, he tweeted as Rachel. Me and Andrew are going to give the world a little insight as to what really lurks around in the shadows of your everyday lives. As soon as he was sure that the videos and tweets were up, Randy begins his sinister plan, something that everyone on the internet can now see coming. But his unsuspecting co-workers have no idea that they're trapped in a nightmare that Randy has already made sure they can't escape. Around 1 a.m. with the doors at the back of the building all blocked, Randy marches his way to the main entrance to the store, where he locks the doors and blocks them with another pallet. Then he pulls out the two pistol grip pump action shotguns he had hidden in the duffel bag that he brought to work. Randy had brought two guns just in case one of them breaks down on him or jams and he has no way of fixing it. As you'll see, Randy has taken great care to ensure that everything will go according to his gruesome plan. Eerily calm, Randy walks through the store, shotguns ready. The details of what happens next are debated, as the news accounts differ from what one of the employees says happened. I'll tell you all of it so you can make up your own mind. All the replies to tweets are like, the mad lad actually did it and shit, by the way? Yeah, that's like 2017 internet. Where every fucking psycho on 4chan fetishized and also celebrated, like, death and destruction. That's how horrible people's lives are. That's crazy, man. You gotta be a real fucking freak to be like, oh, it's so sick that it's happening, you know what I mean? Just like the people who protest the ad breaks at the top of the hour. Like, gotta happen. Just a part of the fucking stream, you know? I mean, there is a way to also avoid them if you'd like to. You can subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Or you can use an ad block or you can use a VPN if uh, the ad block works. I don't know. There are ways to avoid them. If you want to add free broadcasting experience, here's the ad break now. but be warned what happens next is terrifying in the store with randy are 25 year old victoria 47 year old brian 63 year old terry and 25 year old Kristen. according to Kristen, she was in the same aisle as victoria working together to restock the shelves both girls have their headphones in with victoria's music cranked up and Kristen's a little lower the two are goofing around when victoria goes further down the aisle to get another stack of labels completely unaware of what was about to happen I don't hate Victoria, but you gotta go, Randy had written earlier in his journal. All of a sudden, from where she is standing, Kristen hears a few popping sounds, followed by a thud. Kristen doesn't know it, but Randy has just shot Victoria, first wounding her across the chest. But as she turned to run from him, he kept pulling the trigger, shooting her from behind at the base of her skull. Oh and then God. Kristen's whole world turns upside down. When she turns to see what the popping noise was, she's met with Randy standing at the end of the aisle, about several feet away from her, the guns in his hands and Victoria laying on the ground between them. As she watches in horror and shock, Randy mercilessly fires a few more shots into Victoria. Then Randy looks up and he and Kristen lock eyes as they stare at each other. Her feet are rooted to the ground, her mind racing a mile a minute, trying to comprehend what is happening. After a few heart-pounding seconds, during which Randy must have been debating killing her, he just turns and walks into the other aisle. Now this is one of the places that accounts differ, as Kristen says that she made eye contact with Randy after he shot Victoria, which is incredibly disturbing to consider. But the other possible version of events is even more eerie. Various news sources actually reported that Kristen hadn't heard the pop of gunfire at all. Instead, they alleged that according to CCTV footage, after shooting Victoria, Randy found Kristen where she was working, and eerily looms only a few feet behind her and the whole time she has no idea that he's there. Randy has his shotgun still hot from being fired and just watches her for five seconds. Then he turns and goes into the next aisle. I don't know which account is true, but regardless, both versions are incredibly creepy. In the other aisle, Randy finds Brian. He shoots him from far away, hitting his arm, groin, chest, and the right side of his head. Three of the five shots Brian was hit with were lethal, 
Randy also hunts down his oldest co-worker, who at this point had probably heard the gunshots. Terry Sterling is shot twice in the back and shoulder, and I imagine that he must have been trying to run away when he was killed. I've never seen a narrator so horny to describe the gruesome, brutal depictions of murder. It's like, I hate to say this, but dial it back a little bit, buddy. Oh my God, dude. I can... Hear his erection from here. The vibes are super fucked. According to Kristen, while this was happening, she still hadn't moved. She was frozen in fear, sure that what she had seen was a bad prank because how could it actually have been real? When she finally makes herself move, she runs to check on Victoria where she isn't moving. She even tries to shake her a little to wake her up, but though Victoria still has a heartbeat, she's in a critical condition. Kristen realizes she has to go and get help. Because she doesn't know where Randy is in the store, she calls 911 on her phone while still in the aisle. What she didn't know was that it was sadly too late for any of her co-workers to be saved. She then runs to the self-scanners in the store, and as she does, she can hear even more gunshots. At the scanner, she can't see exactly where Randy is, a very dangerous and vulnerable position to be in. So to keep track of his location, she takes a risk and runs a little further. When she spots him and his back is turned, Kristen makes a break for the front door. Once there, she's able to reach past the pallet that Randy has blocked the exit with and finally unlock the door. But when she goes to push it open, her heart sinks. The door won't slide. Panicking, Kristen slams her shoulder into the door until it pops open, and she can run outside and into the parking lot. Even as a brief wave of relief floods over her, she knows she's not out of the woods yet. Her instincts are to run for a car, but when she sees Randy's vehicle, she decides to avoid it and keep running up a hill in order to hide behind a bush until help arrives. While Kristen is escaping, Randy is still inside finishing his plan. Though he's managed to shoot all of his co-workers except Kristen, he opens fire on some of the merchandise in the store, shattering glass all around him before he shoots at a few of the small portable propane tanks. He wants them to blow up to destroy the store and him with it, but they don't explode. Randy continues to randomly fire in the store before he just Wait, why didn't they blow up? They weren't filled? That's a myth? Oh, wow. I always thought that like a full propane tank could blow up if you shot it. Video game physics lol. No, not like blow up in fire, but uh, or well, I guess like it could be fire. What if you shot at it multiple times? Like if you shot into the fucking gas. Decides that he has met the end of his thorough plan. Just as calmly as he made his way through the store, Randy then walks into the deli section where he takes his own life. In a gruesomely short amount of time, a total of 59 bullets were fired, all from just one of the shotguns Randy carried. His last tweet was, goodbye humans, I'll miss you. All three of his co-workers died from their wounds. Only Kristen managed to escape. Even when talking about how she had fled the store, Two lives, motherfucker, two. Kristen still has no idea why Randy didn't shoot her. And so we may never know why he chose to spare her. But I think the fact that most of Randy's shootings were from farther away means that he was trying to distance himself from what he was doing. And after looking Kristen in the eyes, he couldn't bring himself to pull the trigger. After the chaos of the attack, investigators were trying to understand Randy's motive that night. So they searched his home where they found seven boxes of 12-gauge shotgun ammunition, shooting goggles, ear protectors, and a shotgun buttstock. Police also ended up taking some of his notebooks with drawings and cartoons along with his computer as evidence. Together, these materials painted a clear picture for authorities, and digging deeper into his personal life reinforced that Randy was struggling with his gender identity and really documented his declining mental health. But the tapes he released that night, filmed over the past year planning the supermarket massacre, were the most telling, especially the strange details he focused on. You see, Randy was acutely concerned that his parents would throw away his posters after what happened, something that really shows how narcissistic he was. In the middle of planning a massacre, he was worried about his posters. One thing I honestly hope that you guys do, give these posters 
to fans. You know, this room was something special. And, you know, the posters completely border the room. It looks amazing in here. Nobody's room looks quite like mine does, if you really think about it. It's very unique. Yo, this motherfucker had two likes on his goodbye humans tweet. How many fans did they have at the time? Like, what are we talking about? Like, I feel like this person was just like a delusional psychopath who thought that they were like... LMAO, how many fans do you see him? But no, but for real, like, what fans, motherfucker? You had two likes. Okay, rice gum. No, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because it feeds into their delusion. Do you understand? Like, they have an inflated sense of self that comes with, like, hyper-narcissism. And that's what I'm trying to point out here. I mean, you'll have my phone and all that. You could just post on my social media. <laughs> Would anyone want these, you know? And I autographed the back of them. I autographed the back of all of them. So, you know, they're worth something. But what's most clear in his tapes is how baffled Randy was that somehow no one took notice of the... It's kind of wild, because, like... I don't think they had fans, bro. I think like they were just delusional and, and, and thought that they did. And it's ironic because like, I don't think anybody's like, oh my God, I'm such a fan of Randy Stare. Uh, and I really want to buy their poster. You know what I mean? Like no one knew, no one cares. I had no fucking clue. Like, so this pathetic piece of shit didn't actually end up getting their ultimate narcissistic desires are fulfilled either like i will forget about this tomorrow it is irrelevant i will never think about it ever again i mean out of thousands of people how many get more than two likes i have 100 followers and never get likes lol wait really i mean i feel like if you have 100 followers like you get one like every now and then the warning signs especially his parents the warning signs were always there. They were there from the beginning. You could always say, what if, what if, what if, what could we have done? You know, how didn't we know it was all there in front of your face? You know, welcome to reality. In these final videos, Randy released the night of the massacre. It's abundantly clear that he's lost all touch with reality. He even says that he believes the cartoon character Ember is a goddess. I believe in a goddess, which is Ember. He went so far as to document his unapologetic anticipation while sitting in his car talking about how his colleagues are blissfully unaware of his plans. There are hours and hours of tapes to pour over, and that's what makes this case so chilling. Something I found shocking was just how precisely Randy had planned everything that was going to happen. Not only did he know who he would be working with and made sure to have two guns so nothing would stop him, and had videos ready to upload in the hour directly preceding the shooting, Randy also took the time to send an email to the actress who voiced the cartoon character Ember in the series he had created. Less than an hour before he shot his co-workers, Randy thanked her and said that by the time she read the email, he would be dead. Clearly, he had some very strange priorities in his last moments, but what's really crazy about this email is that in it, Randy apparently claims that he had a true purpose to his videos, including the final one, the promised Westboro High Massacre. The voiceover actress didn't go into the details about what exactly Randy's true purpose for the videos were, but I'm guessing it had something to do with his belief that when he died, he would cross over to the animated world. Was that the fucking emblem editor? For Call of Duty, dude? That's it, bro. That's it. Ban video games. No, just ban them. Fuck it. Just... You know, least murderous Call of Duty fan. Now this may sound like the end of the story to you, but it isn't. And Randy didn't think it was the end either. Again, all of the videos that Randy uploaded just before he took his own life told his side of the story. The bio of his Twitter profile even said that he was speaking from before and beyond the grave. 
Watching his videos, I realize that they show a slow progression from the funny and goofy guy in his earlier videos into the monster who would show up on the night of the shooting. I actually found it really surreal to watch the Westboro High Massacre video myself. It starts with a swear-filled rant before it sh Yo, he sounds horny again, dude. Bro, someone needs to do a wellness check on the narrator, dude. What the fuck, dude? Okay, we like we like true crime as well, you know? We like to watch true crime, but this was his YouTube. 8,009, come on. Are you serious? <laughs> Related channels, PewDiePie. Wait, what the fuck? Five months ago? Wait, what? Oh, 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 because it's, it's a time machine. Oh my fucking god, that scared the shit out of me, dude. I thought maybe someone took over their fucking channel and was like running it or something. Can you watch videos in the time machine? No, right? All this because of a ghost girl. Have you learned the Raven technique? Yeah, for real though. Zoomers have better coping mechanisms now. Honestly, it's not even a joke. Zoomers just fucking shift. If they stayed alive for like a couple more years, they could have been on TikTok learning how to shift into being like ghost mode in Danny Phantom universe. And then fucking crying about how shifting is actually really important. And it's definitely not daydreaming. And that's a very real reality. And I'm being ableist somehow. It shows Randy readying two rifles, which were the ones he used in the shooting. And it even includes a few cutaway scenes that show him in the grocery store. Of course, showing the place that would later become a crime scene was disturbing, but it was made all the weirder by being followed with sections of Randy playing on a schoolyard playground. Still, what makes the whole thing even more bizarre is the overall poor quality of his legacy video and the hundreds of comments below it ridiculing him for exactly this reason. Randy even went so far to make... What is he saying? What's this motherfucker saying? Yo, it's on. Nice hat, dude. Love the way it fits you. Quick question, though. Does it come in men's? Thanks. Wow, dude. Wow. Wow. Jake is a misogynist, boys. We found out. This motherfucker wore a $5,000 jacket last night to the party and then flexed on me, okay? If you guys watched the Miskiff stream and I was like calling Jake out, when I was calling Jake out for uh, always wearing like expensive shit, oh my God, look at how out of touch this rich guy is, dude. Oh no, it was just $800. Yeah, what did you say afterwards? You said... But now you can't buy this anywhere. So now it's $5,000. My man said only $800, dude. Y'all yeah, blow your shit up. I'll fucking blow your shit up, dude. <laughs> Exposed. I was trying to fit in feels rain, man. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to hear about it. Okay. Stop cyberbullying people. Jacket worth more than your car. Hey, fuck you. My car is worth. My car is worth more than a thousand, uh, $800. It, it's worth like $5,000, I think.
like the Kelly Blue Book value of my 2011 Toyota Camry Sport uh, is, I think, like four grand. No shot. Yeah, it is. At least Jake didn't look like this. Good one. Oh, I did it. At least Jake didn't. At least Jakey Bakey didn't look like this, governor. Oh, it's me. I'm fucking Aiden. I asked, I asked, uh, Noel if he thought this was a good idea. I want to, I want to like connect with some fucking YouTube, like car guy. And I want to soup up my Camry, like just all the way, you know what I mean? For a YouTube video. Just like matte black, you know, put like. You know, put kits on it, spoiler shit like that. Look up Donut Media there in LA. Yeah, I, I know. I want them to hook it up, dude. Bad idea, just get a new car. Dude, I'm gonna get a new car. I just wanna fucking do something cool with my old car. Okay? Fuck, man. Kelly Blue Book Valley for the Toyota Camry 2011 appraisal is uh, between 4,000 to 11,000. Yeah, it's not a lot. Mine is not 11,000. I've been in... The mileage is low, but I've been in a lot of... I, I've been in accidents and stuff. Let me look this shit up. Donut Media. Are they, um, are they chuds? They kind of look like it a little bit, but I don't want them to let Will spray paint the car for you. Not nah, just funny car dudes. Have a look at this. How the media fueled the riots in Australia over Muslim and Arab racism. What? No, dude, I don't want to watch that. What the fuck? They're liberals with leftist tendencies? Wait, really? Not chills, just cringe? I just followed them. Oh, well, Gus, Gus did a video with them. I'm going to DM him right now and be like, yo, hook me up with Donut Media. Go to West Coast Customs. Okay, let's finish this Part video. Part of this and then final we'll look video, at a tribute to himself with clips of him playing and sad so, music. So, a guy in so it's interesting to consider why exactly Randy targeted the supermarket. In his journal entries, he talked about how targeting the supermarket would be lame. But for some reason, he did it anyway. As it turns out, Randy said in one of his videos that his father was a manager there, and the two weren't exactly getting along. Once I started having lousy grades and applying for jobs, and it just, I hated him. Didn't even want to look at him. And then all he seemed to care about was, like, me getting a full-time job and making money and then trying to move out of the house and start my own life and all this shit, which I knew I never I was never gonna do prime example of people I hate in this world prime example of someone who could be nice and happy and easy going and joking one day to you better straighten out your life the next I thought I could be bipolar too but good lord Ooh, I hate my profession I want to quit find another job that's what you tell me to do you hated your job for years what'd you do you took it out on your family way to go that's definitely the answer to all your problems, isn't it? You hear that? That's me 
clapping and applauding from the heavens above. When's the last time you ever said you were proud of me? When's the last time you ever said I love you? And I'll tell you one thing, back in elementary school, middle school, I used to worry about dad dying the most out of anyone in this house, because I loved him back then. Once high school took off and college and all that, I, I found it impossible to love him anymore. And I just started hating guys more than anything. Something I tracked down which gave me a new insight beyond what you might find about the Weiss Market shooting was Randy's autopsy report. In addition to the gruesome details of his death, the autopsy revealed a couple of really interesting things, and as I go through what I found, the details will only get more intriguing. There's no blood, right? <clears throat> Reading the autopsy report, I found out that Randy was wearing black makeup at the time of his death. The report says that it was on his lips and in orbit patterns, which made me think that he had drawn his makeup to look like the swirls that Ember from Danny Phantom wears around her eyes. When his body was found, he apparently had women's clothing on under... I'm losing my mind, dude. The narrator is like actually horny. It's so weird. <sighs> Wanted to look like Ember. Neath <sighs> his regular clothing. And here's the most interesting find. Randy had 372 milliliters of diphenhydramine in his system when he died. For those of you who don't know, diphenhydramine is Benadryl, and you should never take more than the recommended amount as it can be fatal. But Randy had ingested way over the maximum that anyone should ever take. As soon as I saw this, I realized something. Randy would have been essentially suffering from an overdose that night. His vision would have been blurred, he could have felt really confused, unsteady, or drowsy, and most startlingly, he could have been suffering from seizures and hallucinations as well. I can only speculate about why Randy may have chosen to take this much of something that would harm him, but I think it's interesting to consider that he could have been seeing or hearing things that night. Of course, he had been planning this attack for a long time, and any hallucinations may not have affected what he did, but another really interesting element of this whole thing is Randy's own comments about drugs. In his own tapes, he talks about how he isn't interested in drugs, so why did he take a harmful amount of Benadryl that night? Was it to ensure that he didn't back out of his plan? Some people have speculated that he may have been hallucinating the animated character Ember. In a 2018 interview, Kristen came forward to speak on her experience, and she emphasized that Randy was suffering from a mental illness, and that the man who carried out these evil acts wasn't the person she and her co-workers knew and loved. This was someone different. After speaking with other employees, she says everyone agreed on one thing. They never saw this coming. And maybe that's the scariest part about this whole story. Whether it was a slow, inevitable buildup or a sudden snap, nobody could see the hidden demons just below the surface of Randy's quiet and unassuming demeanor until it was much too late. Although nothing can reverse this awful tragedy, perhaps it can serve as a lesson of the kinds of warning signs that may be able to alert us that someone is a danger to themselves and potentially everyone around them too.